60 milliliters first. 62 layers forming. It should dissolve and it should form a second layer. If the second layer doesn't form, then I have to add more of the sodium hydroxide. But first, I'm going to try adding a sodium hydroxide and looking for the second layer. Do you see an oily ring on top? I have the second layer. And as soon as we have the second layer, I can go ahead and set up distillation. We have to set up the simple distillation to make sure that I'm not losing any of the vapor or the liquid. It's best to use a vacuum adapter. This one, it's going to make the a little bit longer, a vapor doesn't escape and is more directed into receiving container. And we want to collect 35, about 35 milliliters to add the boiling chips. It's boiling and we want to receive about 30 to 35 milliliters of the distillate. Okay, need to connect the Water hose, connect the heat, turn on the heat. What should be the setting on the power regulator? Okay. Better distillation and low or no um, decomposition. And if it's too low, it's not going to, it's going to take a long time. It's not going to form a vapor or the vapor, enough vapor to reach the condenser. The general rule is you want to have gentle boiling. You don't want too much vapor to be produced because if too much vapor is produced, then a condenser is not going to have time to condense the vapor into liquid. So we are going to lose vapor. We are going to receive vapor. Actually, the vapor is going to escape. And that means we are losing our product. If it's the other problem was the problem of bumping. We talked about second experiment. Bump that means the liquid would go in without changing the changing to vapor. So if it's too low, it's not going to boil. We need vapor because it's distillation. We have to change to the vapor, condense the vapor to go back to the liquid. So if you don't provide heat, it's not going to uh, is not going to vaporize, and we do need the vapor. So we have to uh, look for gentle boiling. At the beginning, you could set it at high to make sure it's boiling. As soon as it starts boiling, you can adjust the power regulator uh, to lower number to provide gentle boiling. And it has to be continuous boiling. We cannot put it too low, because if it stops boiling, then we don't have vapor to condense. We have to generate the vapor and condense the, uh, condense the vapor. Transfer to the separatory funnel. Okay, so I'm going to have to go ahead and prepare my uh, setup for the separatory funnel. Separatory funnel. To make sure the height is adjusted so it's like just below the level of the receiving flask the glass stopper must be so add the spatula of sodium chloride uh, in order to make sure that the two layers can be distinguished drain the lower aqueous layer we don't need it and then from the top we get the it's getting cloudy. You see the receiving is because of the amine is oily. And when it's mixed with the water, it's kind of you have the droplets of the oil um, suspended there. Just trying to help you with some techniques and what could happen or why later on we need the salt to actually separate the, the oily part, oily layer from the aqueous layer. 
salt kind of draws out the the, the water so if you have salty a salty water salty aqueous solution is going to get as much water possible from the organic layer and then the organic layer becomes more clear or more distinct so you could see the separation better super cloudy hopefully we can separate it without what type of distillation is taking place here what is actually done here is steam distillation because the steam of the aqueous solution that we have for sodium hydroxide it provides the water and the water is going to vaporize and as it's vaporizing it's taking the drops of oil uh, droplets and bringing up into the condenser so that's why we are getting like cloudy um, solution here but the idea is steam distillation basically you are doing steam distillation with the setup of, of the uh, simple distillation so steam is bringing the amine into the receiving plant. We have about five more milliliters and we should be fine. If we already have, we have 30 already. So just wait for five more milliliters of the distillate. When we add the sodium hydroxide, the tartaric acid actually dissolves in water. So tartaric acid will stay in the aqueous solution or if it comes up it's going to be in the aqueous solution and the oily part would be the the amine now the heating power regulator lower and drop the the heating mantle we are going to add we're going to add the remaining of the recovered solution or distillate into the separator panel. The, the two layers have formed to make sure and make it easier for drying the sample for next step. I'm going to add some sodium chloride, but if you look at closely, um, the two layers have been separated i don't want to add too much of the um, sodium chloride because the layers have formed also if i put too much it gets saturated it's not going to dissolve and then it would be hard to remove the bottom layer so you see the two layers the top layer is clear can you see it what about now can't get any chemicals on my laptop can you see it better? Oh. Good. Now I'm going to separate the bottom layer, try to get it out. Uh, I transfer the top layer. I transfer the top layer into a beaker. Okay, to transfer from the from the top to a dry beaker. You want to make sure the beaker is dry. It's not clear. It's cloudy. That means it's not dry completely. So we have to add the anhydrous agent. Anhydrous agent added to this for this experiment is the potassium carbonate so we're going to add the address agent how much should i add until i get clear solution when the potassium carbonate stops clumping the solution the oily solution is clear when it's clear, it means that all the water has been absorbed enough because the calcium chloride is not plumping. I'm just going to wait until the water is absorbed. 
Then I'm going to transfer into a beaker that is pre-baked because we need the mass of the mass of the substance for our calculation. So zero. This is the mass of the beaker plus sample. You can find the mass of the product. Next step, we're going to add 7.4 milliliters of methanol. Because that's the procedure. And now I have my solution to test with polarimeter. I hope my polarimeter actually is going to, um, because we are using new cells, hopefully it's going to be enough. If not, I have to add more methanol and I will let you know if I add more methanol. There is no way for you guys to be able to see this. I, w I wish there was a way that you could see it, but there's really no way, it's very, um, tiny eyepiece here. It's working now. At least you have to, you have to trust me. This is the cell that I'm using to place my sample in. Okay. When I place the cell by the sample holder to the light is going to be rotated based on purity of the sample I have in the um, in this solution, and I can record the observed rotation. I try to take a picture, or I try to bring the camera and there for you to see how much has been rotated by how many degrees to record the observed rotation. It's guaranteed that you will see it because it's a very tiny, very, very tiny eyepiece here. Okay. So we, are, we start with this. Okay. We start with this and we have to change it until we get to this uh, view. So we have to switch it until we get to this view. Going to repeat it a couple times. It's a new machine, so it's slightly different than the machine that I used before. And, but it's very nice, actually. It's much more clear. The number for me is 15.9. Okay, 15.9. Record that number, please. 15.9. What is 10? Oh, the milliliter volume would be 10 milliliter. So it's 10 milliliter. And the observed rotation. Done with the experiment.